Hello, my name is Wade Nomura and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. I recently had the opportunity to meet up with a number of international presidents. And when I say international presidents, I'm talking about presidents of not only Rotary International, but also with Kiwanis and Optimus. And at this meeting, I was able to plug in and see if, in fact, we can sit down with the, the three of them and actually do an interview and talk about the uniqueness about all of our service organizations, the challenges that each of them face, and the benefits that they bring together. And this group um, actually were um, pretty uh, influential as far as what they've done, what they have done, and what they look forward to doing. One thing that did come out of this project was that they decided to actually do a project week where all of the organizations will one time in one week of the year actually do an organized uh, service project that will meet the needs throughout the world. So it'll be a worldwide week of service. And at that uh, interview, I was able to meet with uh, Nick Prilliman uh, from The Optimist and also Jim Rockford from Kiwanis along with Ian Risley. Now, the unique part about this was that, uh, and as, a, as an example, Optimist, they do not do a float during the parade. So because I saw them during the holiday season, I actually asked Nick if he would be interested in decorating a float, which he said, of course, he's always wanted to try doing a float. He actually ended up decorating the rotary float. So uh, that was part of his help out to us. And also uh, Jim Rockford, I talked to him about a number of things, including membership. And we had a pretty good talk. We spent about a half an hour together during uh, halftime at the uh, Rose Parade, or the Rose Bowl game. And we talked about the challenges that he was facing and, and Rotary, how, what we were facing as far as membership. And the benefit that came out of that is that he offered me a lifetime membership to Kiwanis, which uh, I'm still debating whether or not to accept. But in fact, with the three organizations together, we may in fact include a TV show that would again include each of these groups individually and see what in fact they do. And with that, I, the video I'd like to share with you at this time, so enjoy the show. Thank you. Okay, welcome. Uh, we're here with the President's Summit. We have members of three of the four organizations that are actually here for the Rose Parade. With me today, I have Ian Risley from the Rotary uh, Organization. Morning, well, I didn't mess that up too bad, did I? It wasn't yeah. bad. Uh, okay, good enough. Acceptable. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, Jim Rockford from Kiwanis. Yes. Yeah, and we good. have Nick Prilliman from Optimus. Right. Well, thank you for joining us all. I'm going to start with you, uh, Nick. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, originally from Virginia. I uh, lived in Atlanta about 40, year, uh, about 40 over 40 years. Uh, my background is I, am, uh, I was educated as an architect and an urban designer, and I was in that field for a number of years. Now I own and operate a marketing and design firm. We specialize in annual reports and those kind of things. Been involved in the Optimist organization for over 30 years. I, when I was, uh, I, matter of fact, I was reluctant Optimist when I was first approached to, I was approached from a new club building standpoint, and an individual invited me to a meeting. I went to a meeting, and he stood up in front of the meeting, and he said, come and be part of Optimism, and I promise you we'll make you a better person. And so I joined the organization, and I can promise, I can definitely say that in all the years I've been involved, it never went back on that promise. That's great. Good for you. Jim, how about you? Yes, I grew up in Peoria, Illinois, and that's where I, I still live, and I, I'm a lawyer and practice law there. I'm a full-time lawyer and a full-time Kwanian. Unfortunately, one of those jobs pays. <laughs> my wife and I, so is the right one. <laughs> yes, that's right. And my wife and I work in the same office, so I work for my wife, so, okay. uh, well, which is great. And, uh, uh, so the, uh, I have three children and uh, four grandchildren under 32 months. And uh, all my family uh, is involved in Kiwanis family. My three children were all in Key Club in high school. I was in Key Club in high school, and my wife and I are very active in Kiwanis and uh, thoroughly enjoy it. So. Great. So, what got you involved with Kiwanis? So, really being in Key Club in, in high school kind of planted the seeds for me to want to give back and, and do community service uh, when I got to school. So, I actually joined Kiwanis and JCs the same month uh, when I was 24. Wow. And uh, so, I've, I've been in it for quite a few years. and. Uh, uh, just kind of uh, rose up in, in, in the leadership and just uh, thoroughly enjoyed the organization. 
uh, my best friends are all Kiwanians and uh, other other than some of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Don't all, forget Nick over there. That's right. Well, we're, we're all optimists. You know? uh, <laughs> there you go. The park, so. But uh, it, it's just uh, basically uh, uh, I just love uh, the community service environment and giving back. And frankly, all, all of these organizations are absolutely awesome and you know, are doing the things we need. And I, I'd like to say one plus one equals three because when we come together and work together under programs like Rotary or Optimus or Kiwanis, what we can achieve greatly exceeds what we can do individually. And, and I think that's true. So that is great. Very true, too. Thank you. Thank you. Ian, how about you? Uh, good day, Wade. <laughs> uh, I'm from, um, from just outside Melbourne in Australia. I joined Rotary in 1978. Wow. So you're right, I was extremely young. And, uh, <laughs> and I've enjoyed every minute of it. I'm a, a practicing accountant. By practicing, I don't mean I'm trying to get it right. I mean, I run an accounting <laughs> business. And uh, it's a small group. My brother, fortunately, looks after it when I'm not there. Come to think of it, he looks after it when I am there. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm now privileged to be in the position of being able to tour the Rotary world and look at what it does and uh, all the fabulous stuff as my colleagues here say service is a wonderful thing it really does make you a better person whether uh, you consciously go into it for that reason or not and uh, yeah, I'm delighted to be a Rotarian. Great, so what got you into the organization? Oh well I was, as I say I was young, I was 31 I went along, <coughs> excuse me, went along as a guest speaker at a, a Rotary Club meeting, lunchtime meeting on that fascinating subject of current developments in income tax and they stayed awake most of the time they laughed at the, <laughs> at the right times and they seemed like good people and i had a call from uh, another fellow oh gosh about uh, two months later and said they're starting a new club in your area which is sandringham would i be interested in coming to a meeting i thought <clears throat> why not they seem like good people and i didn't go <laughs> you know what business is like, yeah. gentlemen, you know, uh, in terms of you get busy and suddenly no time. Right. Fortunately, they then rang me and said, we're having another meeting. And I went along to that one. And all of the big business people in the Sandringham area were at this interest meeting, plus me. And I thought, how good is this? I mean, I'm with the movers and shakers of the area. Why would I not want to want to join with them? Entirely selfish. It was only later I realized exactly what Rotary does. Right, right. Very good. Well, thank you for that one. Nick, we're going to go back to you. Tell us a little bit about your organization. Well, Optimus International, we're, we're in our 99th year. Next year, we will celebrate our centennial year. Uh, we started back in, uh, well, we, the, the history goes back to 1911 when we, uh, the club started in Buffalo, New York. And a bunch of businessmen came together and uh, they, uh, to, the whole idea was uh, optimism in business, you know, uh, we you know, looking at looking, you know, uh, to be to be optimistic or whatever. And they were looking around for a project to do, and somebody said, "Well, why don't we do something about the delinquent boys that are running around the streets of uh, of uh, Buffalo?" And so that's kind of how the organization got started. And of course, in 1919, we 11 clubs met in uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and Optimus International was formed. And uh, our uh, our big uh, movement. We've always been focused on children from almost from day one. Uh, we are in 23 countries. Uh, primarily, our focus, uh, our, our I guess you'd say, our largest uh, uh, common uh, clubs, a uh, number of clubs, is in North America and the Caribbean. Um, we are uh, we are going through right now. I think we're kind of going through a metamorphosis. We are we have always been a hands-on type of organization. Uh, we are becoming, we're really looking at becoming more, f more, uh, uh, I guess, project or activity focused. Uh, uh, and uh, so we're beginning to look at experiment with different kinds of clubs rather than the typical uh, model club where, you know, the, you come and meet, you have a meal, you have a program and that kind of thing. And so we're beginning to uh, develop a variety of, of different kind of clubs. We're, we are headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, we have about, at the th right now, we, in adult clubs, we have around, I mean, adult membership, we have about 67,000 members. We have about 15,000 JOY members. Our JOY organization is growing, really is growing very well. Uh, we are, this year, we've got a big focus on, uh, 
on uh, really growing our organization. We first quarter we did meet our growth goals, um, and uh, the, I think the big important thing about our organization is uh, the spreading optimism of a philosophy of life. We uh, really concentrate on bringing people into the organization and helping them learn. It's, it's about being the best you can be. It's not about, you know, it, it, whoever you are, as long as you're the best you can be, and that's what optimism stands for, basically. Uh, we're not Pollyannas. We just look at the, the positive side of things. We think that, uh, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, you, but well, part of our, our creed is uh, uh, look at the sunny side of everything and make your optimism come through. Uh, come true. And uh, one of the things that, uh, well, my battle cry this year is feel the need, plant the seed, do the deed, and live the creed. Uh, because we, we do, that, that is something that we, uh, we're finding that more people, you know, optimism is probably as important today as it's ever been in the history of the world. Right. So, Real quick, uh, give us a little bit of background on what, on what joy membership is. Cause I well, joint membership is kind of, it's, I guess it goes down with the, it's kind of like the key club. That's our, we have, we have three levels. We, uh, we have the, we, we have the elementary school ch children. We have middle school, uh, they're called the alpha clubs. Okay. Uh, the uh, junior clubs are middle school and high school are the, uh, the octagon clubs. Gotcha. And so, uh, and they are a, a really, really dynamic group of young people. And as a matter of fact, my colleague here, I learned he was the, the, he's, he's uh, going and building clubs around key clubs. And I'm thinking, hey, that's a great idea. We may do, we may borrow from him and do some <laughs> of this other kind of thing. Yeah. That's what we're here for. Thank you. Uh, so that group uh, total is Joy. That Joy group is then 15,000. About 15,000, yes. Great. Okay, thank you. Jim, how about you? Yes, uh, Kiwanis is in over 80 nations throughout the world. And the thing that kind of differentiates us from other worthwhile organizations is our emphasis on youth. We have programs in the schools from first grade through college. And uh, our marquee program is Key Club, which is in high school. And uh, Key Club has international officers, just as we do in, in Kiwanis and, and there are other parts of our organization. Circle K is our college component. And then in the grade schools, we have builder clubs in, in the middle school. And in lower grades, we have K kids. All those are, are with the uh, idea of planting the seeds of getting youth to be involved in doing community service. So a couple of the grade school programs are very popular. One is bring up grades. We go and recognize any student that brings a grade up. It can be from an F to D, D to C, C to B. Or like these two gentlemen probably got all A's. We still recognize that. So then uh, we also recognize good citizenship through a program called Terrific Kids. And we go in and it can be as simple as a, a teacher drops her books on the floor and a student comes over and helps pick up her books without being told to. And we recognize that as good citizenship or maybe someone reports that somebody's being bullied and, and we'll come in and recognize their leadership of being a terrific kid. And, and so the whole thing is planting seeds to have good behavior from youth so that when they get out and, and they're working as a, a CPA that they'll wanna do good things uh, for the community. And so that, that's really our, our niche. And you know, frankly, uh, we're, Primarily based uh, out of the United States, more than uh, like Rotary and, and Lions that you know have grown throughout in other parts of the world. We still are active in other parts of the world, and actually, Asia Pacific is our fastest growing area of Kiwanis. But we have 70% of our membership in the United States, and, and the reason for that, I believe, is because of the strength of our program at school, and particularly Key Club. I like to say, Key Club is the best thing that we do, bar none. And, and frankly, if we did nothing else other than Key Club, our purpose as developing future community leaders would be well served. And, and so we, we also have done, you know, some things, we've had two worldwide service projects. Uh, one was to uh, uh, iodine deficiency disorder to uh, deal with salt and goiters, so that was a, a, a problem coming out of that uh, iodine deficiency. And, and then the most recent one that we're doing right now is eliminate, and that's eliminate maternal neonatal tetanus throughout the world. And that was a $110 million project we, we've achieved the $110 million in pledges. We've, we've collected $88 million of that, and, and we're down to less than 15 uh, countries that have an issue with that that was causing you know, the life of mothers and babies uh, all over the world, mostly in third world countries. And, and so we are you know, very committed to doing things that will help you know, the world, and, and yet our, our marquee is really our programs in the schools. Right. Um, do you have an estimate on how many key clubbers you actually have? Yeah. Um, you know, we really, uh, you know, frankly, uh, uh, hard to believe, but our key clubbers actually uh, outwork the Kiwanians. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so over at the floats uh, here. Uh, oh, you have, guys are all over the place yeah, there. We have 7,000 key clubbers oh, wow. uh, coming in volunteering. Wow. And, uh, 
and, and, and there's a lot of good Kiwanians that are there working and, and, and laying sure. the groundwork, but it's a, a really, you know, again, working together. So our, our programs in, in, uh, have actually outgrown our Kiwanis, but one of the things that we're doing, and, and just kind of on, on where we're at this year, we, our year starts October 1, and, and so we have a, a goal this year to open more clubs, Kiwanis clubs, in, in a year in our history, and that would be 409. In the first three months, we opened 102 clubs, you know, so uh, 13 out of the last 15 weeks, I've been out the road, we're calling it leading by example, so I'm asking my governors to be out on the streets, so to speak, going around talking to business people and in the schools and community leaders to open Qantas clubs. And so that 102 clubs have been opened, uh, over 50 of those were in the United States, uh, and then uh, another large portion of those were in Asia Pacific area. But, you know, we're, we're really committed to making that happen, and uh, frankly, we're, we're right on pace. And, you know, so I, I'm, I'm just happy to be involved, though, in, in a thing like the Ro Terminal Roses Parade, because I think it really emphasizes, it, truth be told, that's the largest service project that, that we're involved in that involves all facets, really, of our Kiwanis family. Uh, we have a developmentally disabled program called Action Club, and we have some of them that have been there volunteering uh, over in the, the float wow. building. And, and then a lot of our circle cares from uh, college, and even some of our builders clubbers from grade school have been there. And, and so we, we try to, you know, put the emphasis more on the service than we do on, on the meetings. And, you know, we still, you know, have a lot of clubs that have the regular kind of pro forma of service clubs of a speaker and, and going through and, and, and having a program. But we're really evolving, I think, and part of our growth to attract younger members is to put the emphasis more on, on the service part than on the meeting part. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Ian, what's your bad rotary? Well, uh, nothing wrong with lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> we were founded by a lawyer called Paul Harris back in 1905 in Chicago, and uh, we've grown ever since. There were the first meeting had four people gathered around. Uh, his objective, Paul Harris's objective, was to provide the opportunity for people to enjoy what we call fellowship, enjoy the opportunity to get together, talk about things. And uh, it's, it's moved on from there, so we still have a lot of fun. Wade, we still have a lot of fun, but, um, <laughs> but we like service as well. Service is really important. We uh, have 1.2 million members or thereabouts in just about every country. I understand we're in more uh, places than the United Nations, which is, uh, which is interesting. I think maybe we should have a seat. And the net result of all of that is that we have a, a significant strength in numbers and we're able to take on significant projects. The best known of which, I suppose, is polio eradication. We've taken that on since, well, in fact, 1979, there was a project to immunize the children of the Philippines, I think 6.6 .6 million kids in the Philippines, and it worked, and polio disappeared from the Philippines. So uh, after due consideration and discussion in 1985, um, Rotary and the Rotary Foundation took on the the task of eradicating polio from the world. And we've partnered now with the World Health Organization and UNICEF and the US Centers for Disease Control. And in more recent years, a lot of funding and support from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And we now got down to the stage where from 350,000 cases a year, 1,000 cases a day, back in the mid 1980s, uh, so far this year, we've had 20. So success is just around the corner. And that's um, exciting for Rotarians, it's exciting for the world. In addition, we have programs, and it's really interesting listening to Jim and Nick, the emphasis on youth. We have an emphasis on youth too, and that's really good, because uh, I think the gentleman would agree that uh, the, the future's looking rosier when our children, uh, the younger people in society, are attuned to the concept of service. So we have Interact for school kids, we have Rotaract for college age type uh, people, and I think we've got 1.2 million members and about half a million in Rotaract and Interact. Uh, youth Exchange is one of our, our strong points. Uh, we send a couple of hundred thousand kids every year to various parts of the world. They spend either three or 12 months understanding a different culture. Mm -hmm that builds peace as well. One of our past presidents once said that if every young person could be an exchange student, there'd be no more wars. And that's true because you, you understand another society, another culture. And so that's important to us as well. 
and every club has its own area of emphasis, what they like to do. But every club also is part of a community, so we work in the community and we also adopt more um, uh, broader activities. Great. Thank you. Nick, I'm going to go back to you. I'll give you a harder question here. Tell us a little bit about the presidency, being the president of the organization and the challenges that you've had and seen and some of the benefits you've had from the office. Well, uh, of course, I've only, I've only been, in, been in it for a quarter, so one quarter, so uh, it's been a really eye-opening experience because uh, uh, one of the things I think is great about being the president, and, and I tell people one of the reasons, you know, when I talk to clubs, you know, why I wanted to be president. The reason I wanted to be president is because uh, when I grew up, I, my, I was told, you know, if you want to if you want to have things to change, if you want to make a difference, then you have to be able to step up. And so when I had the opportunity to become the president, I, I, I embrace that because I think our organization, I think there's a, our organization is at a real, at a real crossroads. I really do think we're beginning to, going to take off. I think we're, uh, and as I go out and visit, the great thing is you get to go out and you visit the men and women who are making it happen in the field. I tell people, I'm just, I'm, I'm just like them. I just took on a little bit more responsibility. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, I, I, I uh, you know, I've been in the field, I've worked in the clubs, and so I, I really always try to put myself in, in, you know, what is going on in the community, because that's where it all happens, and I'm sure with these gentlemen the same way with their clubs. Um, you know, that I, I've had the opportunity to, to travel and visit district, dist, different districts, uh, different cultures. Uh, it, it's just, it, but we're all united in one thing, and that's, it, it, that is the optimist uh, uh, movement, so to speak. Now, when you go down to the, uh, into the Caribbean, which is a real experience, uh, they talk about being part of, they call it the Optimist Movement. I mean, it is really a, 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 a really, a, a, I don't know, a, a just a, it's, 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 a, it's a, a cause to them. Uh, of course, their culture is totally different than, than ours uh, here in the United States. Uh, but I, I think the interesting thing is, is, is you know, the, there's all kinds of, you know, there's all kinds of problems that you, that you didn't realize that some of these uh, clubs face and how do we solve those problems. Uh, I put together a real strong team. Uh, we, uh, my promise to my governors, to my club presidents, was that our organization was going to support them, to help them, uh, to spread the word of optimism. Uh, so my job was to come up with a strategic, an overall plan uh, for the uh, for the year. Uh, we brought together a, a planning team, which is one of the first time I brought them from all different parts of our our organization. Uh, and we sat down and we looked at our organization, every aspect of it, and came up with a plan. The idea was a plan that every, that we could that everybody could buy into. It's not my plan; it is our plan. And so each level, the vice presidents, the governors, were all brought in. And they were, were were given the opportunity to have input into the plan. So I think we have a very strong plan. We are moving forward. The first quarter we did achieve our goals uh, that we set. As a matter of fact, we exceeded our goals for the first quarter. Uh, but it's for me, it's really it's really a growing experience. Uh, you know, I uh, I've always I've never really sought an organ a, a job. I've sort of this it sort of happened for me. You know, somebody came along and said, you know, will you try this? And my deal has always been. Well, uh, you know, I want to I want to stretch myself a little bit. So, uh, so this is the this is the big stretch. I got the got, got the opportunity to do this. But it's really uh, to to be involved in the organization, to be involved in, in in I guess helping direct where it's going toward into the next century uh, is a is a real uh, exciting thing for me to be involved in. Great, thank you. How about you, Jim? Yeah, and, uh, Kwanis is 103 years old as an organization. And there's no truth to the rumor that I was a charter member. <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, is that you know, Kiwanis, uh, you know, really uh, has changed my life, and so being president, I, I view that as as an honor and, and something that uh, you know has a great responsibility. And and so part of that, I think, is that we we attract all three organizations. I think attract great quality people. If we have members, they're going to do good things, and they're going to make communities better whether it be doing a, a worldwide service project or doing something in the local community. And so I, I think with Kiwanis, what we needed to do is we needed to stop the bleeding on our membership and, and really increase our numbers. And so the challenge that uh, I've tried to make, and we, we kind of called it the Kissing Baby Tour, that in the past we've kind of gone out and just given speeches, you know, 
our presence may be. And, you know, frankly, um, while there's some value to that, uh, listen to these two guys speak, I'd like to hear them uh, speak whenever I could. So, but <laughs> at, at the same time, in our numbers, we, we had only had a net increase in our membership once in the last 25 years. And, and so you can't continue to do the same level of programming if you're gonna lose your membership, which is 80% of our income comes from uh, our dues income. So in, in the end, we had to get our leadership being willing to step up and lead by example. And so I, I ran the AAU basketball program for 15 years, had 100 kids that got Division One scholarships. One of the things I learned is that you need people to know that you're willing to care about them, but also to do whatever it takes to have them achieve success. And so my governors and, uh, and I, the Tiger team, is what we're calling our field team, uh, going out and opening clubs, they've stepped up and said, yeah, we're, we're gonna do that. And, and my board, 15 of the 19 board members, had never been out in the field to open a club. And so at our October board meeting, we all went out, we opened three clubs in two days in the Indianapolis area where our home office is. And, and what that does is when you see it's not like having a root canal, it's not that painful. Uh, you know, really, it, it reinvigorates you about what we're doing whenever we open a new club. And, and so, you know, I've, I've said uh, that, and, and you can use this whenever you want. Brewers, jurors, and doers. Brewers are the people that have something to say about everything. It's usually bad. We all know some of them. Chewers are the people that sit on the fence and don't do much of anything. And then there's the doers. And, and these guys are all doers, as are the people in their organization, because they're willing to step up and do whatever it takes to make their communities better. And so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for doers, and we're looking for people that are willing to lead by example. And fortunately, there's been great buy-in, and we're, we're going to make it two years of a net increase in membership in 26 years. And I, I think the people following me are, are, are on board with that as well. And, and so we don't have, need to have a one and done. We need to have membership continue to grow. I find that young people still want to give back, but they want to do it more in the context of doing service rather than sitting in a room with meetings. Sure. And that's kind of how we're modifying our, our organization in that regard. And we're having success. And, and I think it's going to bode well for the future. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, I have to say it's really interesting having a chance to chat to, uh, to the guys here um, over the last couple of days, how we have similarities, so many similarities in our organizations with subtle differences. I'm privileged to be the, the fifth Australian to be a president of Rotary International in a 112 years, uh, and that's a, a massive thrill for, for me to go around the world meeting Rotarians and finding out all of not all of, a lot of what they do. And they do wonderful work. Clubs, 35,500 clubs, right around the world, all of them making a difference in their local communities. It, it's just inspirational. Every year we have a, a theme. Each incoming president has a theme. My somewhat imaginative theme is Rotary colon making a difference. And that's because, to me, that's what we do as Rotarians every single day. We make a difference in the lives of the, the people that we assist in our programs, but we also make a difference in our own lives because it just seems to me that, uh, as Nick said before, you become a better person when you uh, commit yourself to serving communities. And uh, it's a, a massive thrill to be part of it. Well, thank you uh, all for being here. We actually ran out of time, so that was a, a quick uh, half hour there. Um, I want to thank all three of you for being there and for what you do for the world. Um, outstanding things. I hope from the summit you were able to maybe coordinate and get some things together. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, pretty fascinating, uh, as you would see, how the three organizations have so many things actually more in common than not. And if we look at partnering up together with Optimus and Kiwanis, I, I will tell you this, it would be a very fascinating world that we would live in if we had everybody sharing those same passions to serving people around the world. And with that, thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that and we will see you next time.